Captain's Log, Stardate 192.168.1.6. Yes, we are on dot six. I have been continuing my adventures of the great ship Twitchington, which unfortunately crashed a few few weeks ago. Me and my science officer are the only surviving officers, yes, and we have been trying to expand our influence on this barren, barren, hostile world. Hello, sp- science officer. How are you doing today? Uh, hello, Captain. It's uh, nice to be uh, see you energetic for a once. I love this place. I am full of energy. Uh, I, actually, I'm full of taurine. Where we found that taurine on this planet, I'm not entirely certain. Don't question me. We have replicator technology, right? Somewhere? I mean, look at these. Look at these beautiful machines here. Definitely not taking raw raw um, resources in to make stuff. We're just we're just making it out of out of thin air, right? Oh, that, um, at least as far as my captain's vision is concerned, that that's all that happens is we just come to the endpoints and grab the stuff we want, cause magic. I yes, yes, captain, of course it's like that. Uh, speaking of which, uh, you can choose a new technology. Oh, let's continue the magic on somewhere else. Now I'm looking at the uh, the turret damage. That's pretty good. Are Sir, you interested in concrete? I, I am mean, interested. For the highway, actually. Honestly, I, I'm surrounded by trees and dead grass and and things that do not make it very easy to walk around. I mean, look at look at this bush here. What is it's this even supposed to be? Completely opposite of Earth right now. It is completely so, opposite. It's not the environment I like to live in. I like to have like long corridors with smooth walls and floors lighting panels a computer that you can just talk to i mean like look at the craziness of this computer and nothing happens what world do we live in right now uh, well we don't have a name for the planet yet but you did mention to call it something like uh, which planet or something planet twitchy not twitch planet, planet. planet. Twitchy. twitch twitch planet is another planet on another <laughs> that the planet twitchy are very much at war with right now <laughs> oh mm. Uh, so yeah, we can take uh, concrete and basically pave everything across. It, I think it will require iron ore for concrete to be made, but we can manage. Does it take concrete? Okay, we, we can definitely manage there. Uh, I have also noticed that we are a little bit short on lighting in a few places. Now, right now, it doesn't really matter because we're in the middle of the day. Uh, but like our, our stone production over here, we're also going to use this as a, a sort of a semi-inspection, if you will. Uh, we've got so- stone production here making all sorts of fur furnaces and stone walls for us that's that's pretty good down the bottom here this is our fuel production loving it but this goes over towards electricity over here the fuel production was one of the areas that i noticed really really needed to have some lights put down uh have we done so here we got we got one light here i don't see any lights in the middle here i'm gonna i'm gonna go through and just place these down highly important stuff else we might like stub our toes when we're walking around late at night in our bathrobes and that's that's not what i want that's not what i want at all we don't have baths at the moment <laughs> no baths oh uh, the, we, the suits are <laughs> self-cleaning their beds speaking of which we should start presumably oh we can't actually research the next research that we need <laughs> can we not oh the the, the purple research oh no military yes. research uh, in order to get that, we actually need to research... Ooh. Let's have a look on the research tree. So somewhere in here there is purple research. Well, I know it's military, isn't it? Military 2. In fact... Blue. Blue, actually. Oh, do we not want the uh, the military stuff? Because that gives us the military science pack. Yeah, but I don't see us actually using military science packs for a while. Okay, all right. You're the man with the plan, or rather the scientific training to, to help us go forwards. Where do we get blue from? There it is. It is advanced electronics, and the thing we are missing here is oil processing and plastics. That's fine. We can research that with the green science and red science we have. We do indeed. Yes, yes, that'll be wonderful. I also noticed we've got electrical energy distribution number two over there. That is a thing we're going to have to work on. This this wants blue. Oh man. Okay, fair enough. Your lights are being produced here. You can definitely place them everywhere you want. Oh yes, I, li- I like to keep the place well lit on such hostile and arid terrains as this we need to be able to see where our margaritas are coming from and this is the machine to do it for us Mm -mm. yes (laughs) definitely Um, this is the uh, the margarita bot 5000 uh it's uh despite only having what's this 10 10 chambers something like that two four six eight 
10. 11 chambers goes all the way up to 11. I was going I was going to going to say how how underpowered this thing was, but no, no, it does in fact go all the way to 11. Uh, we do need to continue the line. Move the bus on. Oh, oh, there is a trouble here. What's the trouble? In the way of the bus, we have this this watery stuff. I believe this to be a living space for fish. But I'm not sure ever I uh, I appreciate having so many fish in the way. Uh, there is a solution, just throw rocks at it, I don't know it's gone. It's called a landfill, apparently. We, we, have, make some. we have literally just researched, so that should be pretty good. Is it made from stone? I've never actually made any landfill at all. It's uh, way, way below my, my pilot's uh, pay grade. Of uh, did I tell you I was a pilot as well as a captain? Uh, obviously, no, I didn't know that. obviously, when 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 trouble starts and I need to take control of my own vessel, say say the young es ensign who was put in charge of dr driving the ship, driving the ship, yep, you heard me, uh, is taken out by a low flying I beam, then I, as the captain, would be required to step up and fly the ship. And let me tell you, at no time would the ship be in safer hands. Uh, that little incident on Corellian 4 is nothing to be talked about. Uh, but aren't you just supposed to just tell the computer to do stuff for you? Supposed to, but I do not believe in today's modern society where we leave the computer to do everything and our brains just atrophy away, leaving us the, the dried up vegetable type husks that we see in today's society everywhere. Back in the back in the old days, there was this there was a, an, an educational film. And they called it Wally, -E, uh, and and in there the, it spoke of the horrors, the horrors of letting computers do all the work for you. So, um, as, as as good good human beings, we've learned to do things ourselves now. Good human uh, beings. <laughs> but according to your own log, you mentioned that having an artificial intelligence in charge of the government would be an amazing thing. Oh yes, of course, that's because he could uh, collect and redistribute all of our ideas, thoughts and processes completely without bias. Because as we know, any any machine made by humans is going to be built without bias. It, it has to be. History would agree with you. History would agree with me very much. A uh, as as a, a scholar of history, I do know this. What, what's going on here? <laughs> Just... uh, we we do need some stone in order to create landfills, and if you want, you can start making them. You just need stone for it. We just need stone. Let's have a look in here. I'm going to take these 50 bits of stone out of this box. Uh, oh, yes. Look in here. I can make two. I can make two landfills. Bam. Maybe, maybe I'm going to put one of these things here. <laughs> Grab one of these as well. Put a power pole down. And make myself a landfill maker. Okay, awesome. I'm not not gonna put too much down here. Maybe a, maybe another box. I can't make a box. Oh no, there's a box. I, I would suggest uh, actually going and finding some more stone. We will need it. Where do you want to explore the map for stone? Oh, indeed. Let's have a look at this map. Which way? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there's not a great deal around. So look into the the west. Northwest, we appear to have a little bit more water that way. Um, so m maybe, yeah, maybe if we just go con completely west, just straight west. Oh, there is some stone down the bottom. There's six thousand stone just just where our pollution drops down to. Yeah, Are we, we can probably grab it. Yeah, six thousand is is not amazing, but also it's stone. We don't we don't use that much stone. <laughs> Although, when we start making train tracks, we will need the stone for making those. Oh, will we? Okay, okay. Uh, well then, let's continue westward and see if there's anything over there. We can maybe swing past okay. this coal. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, what's the name of this forest, Captain? This forest? Well, obviously, this is uh, Science Officer What's-His-Name's Forest. I'm honoured. <laughs> As you should be, Science Officer. Uh, sorry, what was your name again? Zed. <laughs> Zed. Zed, of course, yes. V valuable, valuable officer of the, of the community. Uh, not sure how I'd survive without you, um, X. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you were testing me and you actually knew my name. Of course. I mean, I need to make sure that my, my officers know what's going on. We, ha we have actually just gone past it. I was like, let's just check the map quick. 
<laughs> yet, a, yet another test officer, which you have passed with flying colours. It's not many, uh, not much stone here, is there? Nope. <laughs> it's Kathy all around. Okay, uh, here we go. It actually looks like a meteor crash, then it's just Kathy all around. Oh. oh, that's the last of my uh, my miners. I do, however, have a bunch of transport belts on me. Let's turn this this way. We'll take it all along with the line of the pylons, or collect it all here. I'm not I'm not sure whether we're going to take this with us or not. <laughs> I think we should just collect it here before we invent uh, until we invent trains. Yes. Again, it should suffice for now. I guess. Yes, this will make a whole bunch of stone for us. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, Captain, have you been researching something about the uh, ban of pre-orders? Of course, of course. Back in the 2400s, during the great... The great, obviously, pre-war war, war uh, pre-order wars of the uh, 27th century, as, as previously mentioned, uh, we... Uh, <coughs> We had a downfall of society, a collapse of the economy, if you will. So many people had invested so heavily in un unspecified products, products that had not even reached fruition, that some called it uh, a, a bubble on par with the great cryptocurrency bubble of the early 23rd century. Uh, of course, this is just uh, over overhyped talking. We have not had a, a, an economic crash that has even come close to rivaling, rivaling the cryptocurrency crash. But the pre-orders, they, they were definitely a, a terrible time. Terrible time. People were parting with money before they even knew what they were going to get. It, it was it was weird. I d I'm not sure why people did it. So what's your opinion about it? It it, it was a bad idea. It was. Um, it was as bad as the uh, as the selling mortgages on people's houses that couldn't afford it. People were buying things before they actually had a product. This this meant they were giving money for nothing. I mean, I'm not sure if you understand how the economy turns, but if you've got people giving being given money for no reason at all, well then that's that's four stages away from a critical collapse. As 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 prescribed by uh, by the the many lords of pseudo economies, but isn't that something like a donation at that point? Donations, of course, very very different. Donations are trying to uh, trade money for increased happiness in the world, whereas pre-orders was all about the selfish acquisition of goods. And now this is a fine fine distinction i can understand that but if you had gone to captain school for as long as me you would see see the difference clear as day it's 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 all part of our many years worth of training you need to understand the the intricacies of the many interwoven and interdependent economic strands out there i never saw it like that no thank you for opening my eyes you're most welcome Never remember net gain is the purpose of money if you're not doing it for the net gain of all, you're not doing it for the net gain of the economy. Captain, you've been speaking about this thing called money. Money, uh, yes. Can you explain it a little more? Uh, I don't quite understand the of, concept. Of, of course, after the the great the great cryptocurrency crash of um, obviously I said the 2700s and it was the 2400s that the uh, the pre-order bubble crashed. After the great cryptocurrency crash, uh, everyone was very scared of this concept of money. Um, it was how to say this? It was an intermediary in the uh, in the production of goods. So you can see how in 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 this world here we have raw materials and we make end products with it using the the wonderful power of the perpetual motion. Uh, and unfortunately, back during the cryptocurrency crash, that they hadn't quite. Uh, figured out the the wonders of perpetual motion because they still believed in this zero-sum game where you needed to have something for something very interesting it's a very interesting concept whereas nowadays we we don't we don't need anything we have the suit we have these machines that do all the work for us uh, at no point do i have to pay you in anything other than here sorry here's today's wages by the way here's your stone um why, thank you. I'm using the stone to make uh, landfills, which exactly. are going to be useful for the... So what we just did there... 
what we just did there was something called a transaction. Now, oh. I hear there's more okay. than two types of transactions, but I'm not sure entirely what they are. It's, it's all uh, down to Captain, personal choice. Uh, uh, am, I, am I understanding this clear, clearly? A transaction, would that mean that I need to give something for you then in return? Oh, so again, going to the donation, what I did was just donate to you, which is, of course, another form of transaction. Uh, and I believe you got happy from this, yes? Uh, yes, Captain. Well, it's gonna uh, improve the. Uh, well, it's not still a colony because there's only two of us, but this outpost at least. <laughs> this, th I think we can call this a colony. I, I think the scientific and research-based colony. Uh, it's what okay. we do here. Uh, may maybe, maybe if maybe later on we could uh, talk about getting a third member involved. You know. Hmm? I don't know how that's gonna work. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. <laughs> Captain, aren't you t weren't you thinking about doing that with the natives? Uh, indeed. I mean, I am a man. I am a man of many, many and varied needs and wants. Uh, I, I, I do not wish to restrict myself, especially when we have the ability here. Oh, the tool belt, good shout. Uh, we have the ability here to uh, start society over new and fresh without the baggage of uh, social convention. So uh, if if I if I as a as a warm-blooded human captain want to express myself with my science officer and with the local inhabitants, who is going to stop me? The local inhabitants <laughs> and the science <laughs> officer. Um, ah ah okay. Wow, yes, that could be a problem there. <laughs> okay, I, I have that some... could be a problem. <laughs> Thankfully, my captain's training has taught me that all problems can be overcome with enough perseverance and a good set of the team behind you. Okay, so I have three bits of landfill here. Uh, the, my, my mighty, mighty bits of landfill that I've been creating. I'm going to just pop them like that. Bam! We've made some more room for the bus. And I, I've made I'm the really science. interested why the landfill is actually greener than the surrounding area. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, like, it's supposed to just be stone, right? Yes. And, and somehow we've got grass sprouting. Oh, Captain, I think this is proof of uh, non-living ma ma material turning into living material. Uh, That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, biogenesis. Captain, so we created living matter out of stone, or non-living matter here, although it might have been contaminated. It may very well be. I, I think. I think you'll find that it was contaminated by my awesome powers of captainness, and therefore I decided that it had to sprout grass in appreciation. Uh, in no way could this be done with anything other than me being here. Mm, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it, uh, it's obvious when you're a captain. Uh, it's it's one of the first things they teach you in captain school is uh, how to make more grass from stone. It's uh, they they say the it'll first be. Thing they teach you. The first thing, yes. Well, I have 84 bits of landfill here in that small little landfill thing that I made. That, that's, that was pretty cool. I do need to ask you about... Uh, did you think about the quick saving and quick loading in a game where the inhabitants of that game are sentient? Are sentient. I, I have thought long and hard about that, actually, because that, that actually really did stump me. It's like, is it? Um, I, I, I've asked... Asked my, my many, many captain's friends whilst I was at it as well. Uh, whilst whilst uh, locked in subspace communication with uh, Stella, Stella, Stella Fleet. Most of most of the, my captain's friends were of the opinion that if they didn't remember, then it's probably ethical. But if you did some dodgy stuff beforehand and you were just doing it to wipe their brain, that's probably unethical because you can still remember. Scenario then. You are playing a strategy game where you need to conquer the galaxy. Let's put it like that. Yes. Uh, and uh, the AI that's in there uh, does know what you know, of course. It has its own life and it's living. But you're using your knowledge and uh, you're rolling back and negating their strategy that they used against you. 
Ah, I see. So you're using like because this essentially boils down to a time traveler paradox, right? If yes. if you can go into the future and know what your enemy is going to do, yes. uh, is yes. is it okay to then use that knowledge against them uh, later on? And and I've got to say, I think this probably comes down to deterministic choice. Like it's it's down to the only thing that makes it through that that loop. The only one that can remember is probably the guy who gets to decide. Um, so it, it's so subjective. I'm, I'm going to say it might not very well be moral, but you can definitely expect that to be the outcome. Is eating meat moral? You know, it's that sort of thing. It's, yeah, it's not great, but you're going to expect it to happen all the time anyway. So is it that bad because you expect it to happen anyway? Hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah, very, very interesting. You know, is is the killing of food for prey, uh, prey for food? Sorry, is that bad? Because that's basically what you're doing. You're using one of your, one of your, um, let, let's call it evolution for argument's sake. One of your evolutionary adaptations as an advantage against another creature. Now, I think yes, that is moral. I, I think that humanity just, uh, during its course of evolving and growing up, just made up uh, morality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so we didn't, um, so we didn't do each other over too much. You know, as as a as a species, we could be very inclined to wipe another tribe out. That's 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 not unknown of that that has happened a few times, but I we. Think the only immoral thing is uh, actually making up a story that makes you more moral than the other person yeah yeah the, yeah yeah justifying actually. the actions that you do with morality is questionable it's very yes I, I I agree I agree of course uh, there, there are many <laughs> many many Many. Uh, oh, was that my tool belt? Oh, look at this. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Let, let's 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 take a moment from this philosophical ramblings to talk about the fact that I now have another line of uh, of, of hot bar down below. Now, now I know um, I'm talking meta here for a second. I can press one, two, three, four, five for my upper tool bar. Does it go six, seven, eight down the bottom? Because it's shift one for this side, right? Uh, let's let's do a test quick. Let's do a test. If I put this radar here and press six, no, no, that's not it. Uh, how do you? You have the uh, um, button in the middle of the tool belt that switches the top to with the bottom row. Ah, very nice, very nice. I didn't know about that at all. It's very plainly right in the middle of my screen there. Did not see it. <laughs> <laughs> Did not see it. Oh, also, I've learnt the secret of running with. Uh, these things power poles um, oh. if you just go to the furthest extension and then press and then hold the kit the mouse down and just keep running with it held down it will place them at the furthest extension for you that's very useful. handy very handy killing animals for food moral I'm moral going, yeah killing animals for territory gray zone but i'll go with it safari style hunting for trophies Mm, now this that that is a, a troublesome a troublesome grey area. Uh, I personally am against it, but I do understand that we have biological urges within us that make that very appealing as a human. Okay, but okay, just one point to point out. Yes, people that go there and hunt in a safari type of situation and have the lion. They'd pay for that, and the Safari Institute that's preserving other life there is using that money to protect other animals, ah, and they're yeah. also assigning the animal that can be killed. Yes, yes, uh, and uh, so that's almost like managed woodlands, if you will, where you plant a tree to kill it, to rip it down later for whatever it is that humans use trees for in this. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, that, that, it almost again is like the food industry, right? Where we we grow animals for food, and no one really cares about that animal getting killed at the end. There, there are a lot of people that do actually, but you know, as a society, we've decided that that's all right. 
But if a conservation area decides that it's going to grow an endangered species for hunting, I know we we always get a little bit. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Which yeah, it, I think it's more to do with the with the creature being hunted. Because whilst logically, in my head, that whole growing one to hunt so that you can buy. Uh, so you can pay for the conservation efforts of the entire area. Sounds good, but that's still another lion dead that could have could have bred. Yeah, you know, could have mated. So yeah, but if it's if old, then it's out of its prime. You know. Oh well, it's then that's not... that's probably all right. I, I think what we're discovering here is these situations are hugely contextual. Yeah, yeah. everything is okay in a circumstance. Yeah. Yeah, in, in circumstances. I mean, killing is okay if it's in self-defense. Yeah. But if if manage so that's, that's the problem because the ju jury and the judge will at the end decide if it was necessary to do that. That's it. That that is it. Uh, and even as a society, uh, um, not so much not so much where I came from, but there are societies that very much uh, use killing as a punishment you know if if they think that they can't deal with this uh, aberrant member of society that they have to deal with uh, capital punishment is an option for for a lot of people um, now I personally many years into living on this planet I'm still not sure how I feel about that because people change all the time um, but if they're that broken who knows that yeah that's that's a very gray area there very good. The, the, the whole ending of a human life, it's it's tough. It's tough. Some mm. sometimes acceptable um, uh, if they're suffering, uh, and some might say the mental illness that dr drives someone to be a killer is also a, a state of suffering. But that's hard to that's hard to to put into context because that you've got to go. I have a, go on. I, uh, so. Escaping punishment by committing suicide. I I think they've taken themselves out of that equation. So my main but, problem. But but society has an opportunity to copy their mind into a simulation. Yeah, I, I think at that point society has gone into the into the moral grey zone, into the into the moralistic bad zone, if you will. So for me. I do not like the punitive justice system. I don't like you've done a bad, so because you've done this bad against the person, we're going to try and get, make it right for that person. Whereas what I feel should be, we should have is a, um, a rehabilitation system. Like, yes, you've done a bad. Let's find out why you did that bad and see if we can make life better for you so that you don't do that again and, and become a productive member of society. Now the problem is the person who got who had that bad happen to them generally wants something to happen, uh, and, and because I, revenge is what everyone wants. Yeah, yeah, and, and and that the word you just used there, revenge, is my big problem with our justice system at the moment. It, I, I I don't feel like we should be trying for revenge. I think we should be trying to make things right. Uh, and obviously, everyone's idea of what is right is is massively different from each other. Uh, so this is this is where it all kind of falls apart. Uh, you know, it, it'd be nice if we could. So there was a serial killer in this country a little while back, Peter. I can't remember his name, but he was a schizophrenic. While back, sir. Uh, oh yeah, a while back. You know, um, se several hundred years back in the uh, the the 1980s, that that distant distant hedonistic time when we were just starting to get the idea of what technology could do. Um, but there was this man who had a, a brain abnormality. Uh, he was a schizophrenic. Um, he had all sorts of horrible voices telling him to do all sorts of horrible things. Um, and he went on a killing spree, killing prostitutes and such forth, as these guys generally tend to do. Spent the rest of his life sitting inside a police cell, taking his medication so he was fine. Like He, had, he didn't have any of these urges to go and do what he did again. He just sat in his cell, um, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Voluntarily, yeah. Um, he he, re he recognised that he had done all these horrible things, but also that he wasn't the same person afterwards. 
So is that is the person in the jail cell actually the person that committed the crime? That's the problem. And like from society's point of view, from the outside, nobody wants that guy walking around. Like no, nobody wants. Everyone's scared for their own safety. Yes. And, uh... Yeah, which is fair enough. And and thankfully, the 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 guy has. Um, uh, uh, recognizes this and is like fair enough i will just exclude myself from society because of these horrible things that i have done but isn't he a bigger burden on society by being still there yes yeah and this is the problem this is one of the many problems of the the punitive system the you know punishing people you you'd need drugs okay come to this location we'll give you this and you can still be a functioning member of the society and the society is not gonna shun you because you're have a problem yeah yeah exactly. a medical problem exactly and and so many of our problems nowadays come from society not knowing how to deal with the problem individuals i, I can't wait for the war on sugar it's coming you know it you know it. we've yeah. ju we've just got out of the war on fat i think with that we've done a beautiful <laughs> job extending the bus an entire six tiles <laughs> filled in this lake here but more importantly had some very deep and thoughtful conversations on the nature of reality and the punitive system so uh with that captain's log signing off <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>